Hi, so John Wynne suggested this to me actually and I thought it was an awesome idea, at least as a mid-stage experiment because I thought it was just a good idea. I mean, you've got to bear in mind what we're working with here and basically it's a pile of scrap wood that I've nailed together. So if it does anything, it's awesome. And anyway, we go from here to improve the performance or improve the build quality of it is going to improve the performance. So what John suggested was sticking a load of magnets around the rim of the wheel, which is exactly what I've done here. These are ceramic magnets, incidentally, and um, I paid, I think it was about £10 for 50 of them or something like that. So I've glued 62 magnets around that wheel. And here is a microwave oven transformer, and I've been using this a lot actually in these experiments because it does quite a good job actually. And the oven transformer is just pointing at those magnets. So as this wheel spins, of course, it generates. Now we're going to take this out into the wind. It is windy, but it is dark again, but that's kind of cool because remember in the previous video, we did this adaptation to a lighting panel. What I'm going to do is stick it in the wind and see if we can light this lighting panel. Enough to light that LED panel. Isn't that cool? Give us some ridiculous. It's not terribly windy actually, but it's obviously enough wind to turn that. just awesome. Okay, so I, I am truly amused by this actually because yes, this is a scrappily made thing. I mean, it's trash wood screwed together and glued together with super glue. That's all it is. And yet it can produce enough in a, I suppose it's about, I don't know, 10, 12 miles an hour wind. It can produce enough to light that lighting panel. And that lighting panel is a 36 watt lighting panel. It didn't light it to full brightness, that's very true but it must have been a minimum of 24 volts that this stupid thing was producing. Now you'll have noticed it flickered. If we look at this, you'll see that the magnets are quite close here to the coil. As it rotates, the magnets move quite a long way away, and of course that's causing the flicker. The reason to do this is because this isn't true. Uh, and it's not gonna be true. It's a scrap piece of timber that's been in the rain. It's warped to crazy, so it's not gonna be true. Now, if we did this, however, in this arrangement with the magnets around the outside and it was true, then we would get really good generation out of that. I mean, that's what we're seeing. When the magnets come close, we see enough power being generated to light that light from a single coil. That is awesome. Now, it's not a very high torque machine, but it does tell you that all those people who are telling you you need high torque are actually just talking, pun intended. Actually, apparently, you don't. Apparently, with a low torque, as long as it's at the rim, then you're going to get generation. And I think that's where um, vertical axis and horizontal axis wind turbines are going to win. What we tend to do with them is bolt a motor onto the axle where they're still low torque and they get very poor power out of them. That's all very true. But of course, with this kind of turbine, you are basically building a wheel. So all we've done is take the magnets from the center and move it out to the edge where the RPM is much greater and we get generation. This is not talking about it, this is actually doing it. Even in this terrible and rubbish way, we can actually get enough power out of that to be usable. I think that's astounding. Now what it tells me obviously is don't build it out of scrap. Now I love things where if you make them rubbish and they still work, you're on to a winner. Because if you make them rubbish and they work, if you make them better, they'll work better. If something is made as best as you can and it still doesn't work, well, there's going to be no improvement you can make on it. It's never going to work. 
The simplest things to me are often the best, particularly if they're not together, and they should be. I mean, if you look at that first electric motor, it was a pile of rubbish that would never imagine doing anything. You look at this, it is a pile of rubbish, and you would not imagine it doing anything, and yet we can get it to light a lighting panel at 36 watts. I think that's really kind of cool, and it tells me to stay with this design. Now, the cable drum we used because it was available, but that warping in it, obviously, is um, a serious drawback. So that's why I was going to bolt it to the machine here, because this machine is true. So if I bolt this wobbly old drum onto that cross, the drum will wobble, but the whole machine won't. And where we put the magnets on that flywheel here, where my hand is there, that's going to run true, so we can keep this coil close to the magnets and get a constant output. We can't do that on a warped cable drum, which is why we're having these problems. But of course we could reconstruct this cable drum with just a nice flat piece of material of some description. Resin, aluminium, something like that, where we can stick the magnets on. So I thought it was a really good suggestion by John because it's very simple, obviously, and simple is always best. So I loved the suggestion, which is why I did it. I knew the drum would warp, which is why I wanted to bolt it onto that machine. I'm actually a bit of a quandary now, because I'm now not so sure if I'm going to bolt it to the machine or use that machine to do something else, like a, I don't know, a, a, a pedal-driven fret saw or something like that. Remake this, but remake this so that everything's true and that we can keep that close and then see what kind of generation we can get out of it. Now, the problem with these horizontal turbines is, of course, wind direction is quite important. There's a lot of places where this would be good, where wind direction is constant. Things like motorways, obviously, things like tunnels, that sort of stuff, where the wind is always blowing in one direction. But if you've got multi-directional wind, you probably really do need a vertical wind turbine of this design. So I'm thinking, remake this, but in a vertical axis, and of course we'd need a thrust bearing at the bottom and a proper bearing at the top, same magnet arrangement with the magnets around the rim. Now, obviously, we did this when we did the rotating vent wind turbine. It's exactly the same kind of thing. Here, though, it is very makeable without having to spend an absolute fortune on it. So my thought is to remake that in better materials as a vertical wind turbine and use the bike for something else. But I thought I'd share John's suggestion with you. I thought I'd show you the results of it. I'm pretty impressed, and it's taught me a lot about these things. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for watching.